Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate an actual value or observation given a percentage. So recall the last time I stated that anytime you're given a z-score formula, you can have any one of these items missing and all you need is one unknown to calculate uh, to calculate it. So for example, um, you can be given a z-score and you may be asked to find the mean uh, right here. Uh, you could be given the observation and standard deviation. So as long as you know three out of these four items, you can use this formula. So right now we are asked, what is the length of pregnancy that separates the top 5%? So first of all, where is the top 5%? I mean, we can estimate it because if we use the empirical rule, um, we know that 68% is one standard deviation left and right and so on. Um, so if we added up all the areas from the top, because the top 5% would be on the right. So I can see that this is 2.35%, 0.15%. So we have 2.5% right here. So we already know this is the top 2.5%, but we want the top 5%. So we can estimate it to be somewhere in this region. In other words, between 640 and 671. So somewhere between there is the top 5%. Now I'm only estimating and highlighting this region, um, but somewhere over here is the top 5%. So how would we actually find a z-score to represent the top 5%, which, by the way, is equivalent to the 95th percentile? So what does it mean, 95th percentile? Remember, percentile is always read from left to right. And it's important because when we read z-scores, we also read from left to right. So I actually want to know where this z-score lies right here. Where will this z-score lie? Well, I know it's going to be somewhere between 1 and 2, but how much exactly I would need to use the table. So let's go ahead and look at the table and see where we're going to find the, the, um, find the top 5%. So let's go ahead and look at that table. And this time I will enlarge it because last time it looked like it was pretty small to read. All right, so we are looking at uh, the top 5%. So if you re remember, I said that when you read a z-score, you always read it from left to right. You could see how they shade it. So if I want the top 5%, um, to find this region here, I have to look left to right. So actually, the top 5% means that I would need to look at the 95th percentile. So that is really important. So we're going to look at the 95th percentile. Now, since we are looking at area, we are only looking at um, this region here. So let me get a pen. Okay. So area is anything in the table itself, not the margins. What we want this time is a z-score. Last time we were given a z-score and we wanted to find the area. This time we are given the area and we want to find the z-score. So we want to look for uh, the closest to 95%. So you can see this represents right here 93.32%, uh, 93.345%. Uh, I want 95%. So I, when you're looking down the table, you can see that um, right here, which is 1.6. And as I go along this row, okay, I want to get closest to 95%. So I don't want to go above 95%. I want to go closest to 95%. So it looks like we have it right here. This value right here is the closest we have to 95%. Now later when I show you how to use a calculator, you would see that your calculator is a little more accurate. So how would I read the z-score here at this value, which is 0.9495? Well, it's definitely 1.6, but we're not done here. You got to go look up this column. So look up the column, and we see that's 0 0.04, but then you got to look across and this is what we start with. 
So our z-score actually, this you always start with um, the column here, okay, on the left, and this is adding the decimals. So it is 1.64 is the closest z-score we can get to 95 percentile. Now, of course, if we used our calculator, we would probably get a little closer. So maybe it would be 1.6 for something else. So let's go ahead and write that z-score of 1.64 and use it in our example. So we have our z-score is 1.64. So I'm going to go ahead and use all the information I have. I have a z-score of 1.64. We got that from the table. I want to know what score or what are the days, the observation right here. This is my unknown. I do not know this. I do know my mean. It is given by 609 right here from our previous problem. And I also know the standard deviation is 31. So to find how many days, what is the length of pregnancy that separates the top 5%, you basically just need to solve for this um, equation. So this is just a proportion you can cross multiply. So basically 1.64 times 31, you can always use your calculator. So 1.64 times 31 is, so 50.84 is equal to x minus 609. And then I'm just going to solve for x. I'm going to add 609 on both sides. And we're going to get, that looks like, what, 659.84. So that is our X. So let's see if that makes sense. 659.84, does that fall between 640 and 671? Because we said our Z-score was 1.64 and 1.64 also falls between z score of 1 and 2. So the z score of 1.64 corresponds to 659.84 days. So this is about, we could say about 660 days. We can say about 660 days, or we can be more accurate and say 659.84. Eight. So to answer the question, the top 5%, the length of pregnancy that separates the top 5%, the length of pregnancies that separates the top 5% is 659.8 days.